Howdy! Well, Tubalcane went to an auction sale. And that's the subject of this video. And uh, I spent a king's ransom. But I had a good time. And uh, I indulged myself in my hobby here with my small toy steam engines. And I bought about a dozen of them. As you can see here. And uh, I will just go through them real quickly. There's some that are duplicates. And several here I already own. But, you know, sometimes you can't resist it when you think the price is right. So, uh, and some of these will appear in later videos with my grandson, Jordan, as we fire them up. I suppose that many of these have not been run in years. But there's a, a dozen engines. And I also bought uh, this little Stanley plane here. I think it's the number 92 paid too much for that and I think it's missing a screw. Maybe I had a screw loose to even buy some of this stuff but also I bought and I showed this and I think in another uh, another uh, video a nice steam whistle. There's two of these identical. Two inch diameter about 12 inches long. Three chimes. Johnny Cash could do that with his mouth. This is a little Sterling hot air engine and I've noticed there seems to be very little interest in these uh, on my videos. I've, I've made a lot of them, I've showed a lot of them, but uh, I, I'm, I'm not getting a response. But this one is made by uh, Solar, Solar Engines. They made a lot of these. This is a pretty common one. I might show that later on. Here's a little oscillating engine made by the Jensen Company, and this is not an old one by any means because there are uh, warnings on it. They certainly didn't give any warnings on the older ones. I don't believe this one's ever been fired, and this would be run by their little uh, fuel tablets. And yeah, that's that's perfectly clean. That's that's never been used. Got a sight glass on that end. That's that's glass. So you can tell how much water is in there. That's kind of nice. This is a Mammoth. Made in England. Also oscillating. But it does have a uh, reversing lever on it. Which is kind of neat. And the boiler. Nicely bent little copper tubing. And that's the pressure relief valve there. And and there's a little whistle. That's a whistle. Actually, I guess that's that's what it's for, blowing the whistle. But when you blow the whistle, you're also releasing steam. That's also fired by the little uh, fuel tablets. But you could put alcohol in there, too. Reminds me of an erector set, the way they got it perforated. This is one of my favorites, and I always wanted one, and it's made by Junior Engineering Corporation, Chicago. Right in my backyard, or front yard, or something. It's got a little boiler, and I don't know if it works. We'll see. I hope it heats up. But this is a beam engine. Oh, we got something loose there. Most of these engines need a little bit of work. If they were owned by a boy, they have been damaged. You can count on that. That's called a beam engine. I thought that was pretty neat. The boiler is made of some kind of thermoset plastic. Uh, I guess it would be like a Bakelite. There's the filler and the uh, pressure release valve. Die cast base. Matter of fact, all these parts are die cast. Hope I can get that one running. This is a Whedon engine. I believe they're made in Germany and it has a little bit of a slide valve or a spool valve. Cast iron base. It weighs quite a bit. And it is electric. So I hope the heating element works. Boy, I don't see anything under there. That must not have a heating element or must be, have been removed which is just as well because I might enjoy uh, putting a, a flame under there although I see a solder joint if that's soft solder 
I don't know. And it's missing the cap here. Mom probably found that on the living room floor, put it on the windowsill of the kitchen, and it sat there for three months, and then she said, I don't know what this is, and threw it out. And that was in 1933. These two little Empire engines are about identical. This one's missing a couple wooden knobs here. Those are missing. Now I already have one of these, but mine has a spoked flywheel, which I always like the looks of a spoked flywheel a little better. But in the end at this auction, uh, you know, the auctioneer gets a, a bid for X number of dollars, and then you get your choice of uh, how many you want. So I, I grabbed a couple, probably some things I didn't need, but in the auction excitement, that is what happens. There were about 35 or 40 engines there, and the ones I really wanted were... Uh, they looked like they were homemade, but very well done by a master uh, machinist, and they went for over $800. So, old Tubalcane was out of the bidding real fast, or maybe I didn't even get a bid. And this is also an Empire. That's the kind of flywheel I like. This is oscillating with the vertical boiler. I like the looks of that. Neat little whistle up here. Sight glass. And that's where you fill it, but the chimney is missing. There would have been a chimney on here. The chimneys didn't do anything. They were strictly ornamental. Look at the old braided wire. I suppose it's got asbestos in it. Don't call the EPA on me. Here's a pair of Empire engines. I've been wanting one of these vertical ones for a long time. I really think they're awesome. The plate is missing off this one. This one's a little bit of rough. It probably will run. They're both electric. This one is a nickel plated or chrome, probably nickel. But that plating has taken a beating where here we got a straight copper boiler. But those are nice looking little engines. Quite heavy because it's a cast iron base. Not one of those stamped sheet metal or uh, die cast, but that's cast iron. This one's loose here. It's too loose. To loose Lautrec, as a matter of fact. That one needs some work. I believe that this electric engine is a Whedon. I'm not positive, but it sure looks a little spindly and cheap right in here. And I think that's a lead flywheel mounted on a wooden base. They didn't worry about a fire hazard then if it overheated, you know, that thing would smoke out. Brass boiler, tiny little whistle. And those little whistles are real screechers. Not much to see on the other side. All the prettiness is on the front side. They didn't worry about bearings either, it's just a rod through the sheet metal. And I suppose that originally if these were made in the 30s or 40s, you know, that might have been a four or five dollar item. But still that was an expensive toy for a child and probably a, uh, not too many people had them. Uh, the old man couldn't afford it because he worked in a coal mine. You're not going to work three days in a coal mine to buy a toy for your kid. This is my favorite, and I paid the most for it. It's a Jensen. They were made in Pennsylvania, Jeanette, Pennsylvania. And what I like about this, it's got the little dynamo or power plant. But let's take a look at the engine here first. The boiler is about the same that they've used on the, several of their other engines. And Jensen, I believe, still makes engines. And they're not real cheap either, because you can see there's still a lot of handwork. Well, this one has a little governor here that now those balls will swing out. Actually, they're pretend balls. They're flat. You know what, uh, when they talked about balls out, an engine was running balls out, the, the balls, they're talking about the balls on the flywheel. Uh, not the flywheel, the governor, rather. The, the flyball governor. We got a reversing valve here, I suppose based on the old Stevenson principle, but I'm sure somebody will correct me on that. 
And this also has a little bit of a spool valve. It is not an oscillating engine. And notice here, when you got the reversing valve, that you got uh, two eccentrics and two eccentric straps. So that's kind of neat. The uh, belt pulley here, which actually is a spring, is kind of stretched out, and this one looks like it's damaged too. But you know where you can get these? Oil seals, large oil seals, uh, like for an engine or a tractor or something, have a spring inside of them that can be salvaged. And here's the little dynamo, a little uh, DC generator with the light post and a, and a lamp. And I hope that works. That's kind of neat. Now, they sold one of these, ju just the little generator sat there, and I think that went for 70 or 80 dollars just for that little generator. But quite often these uh, little uh, model engines had available little accessories. Uh, some of them were do-nothing things like a little saw or a little pump that wasn't really pumping water, but at least you could put your engine to work. And the idea, I think, was to sell the engine to the boy one Christmas and add accessories over the years like they did with the Lionel trains. You got the kid the basic set with four cars and then for the rest of his childhood you could buy him uh, the milk loader or an extra locomotive or cattle car or something you know to brighten up his day and uh, something to look forward to on Christmas. Okay this concludes uh, the overview of the engines and Tubalcane's uh, sale here the other day. And, uh, you know, I go to a lot of sales, so if there's any interest here, I probably will, will uh, show uh, what I buy at these sales. Uh, I, I spent an awful lot on this one. I hope I don't, uh, you know, I got, I'm, I got this stuff hidden out in the garage here. I hope my wife isn't watching and, and never watches this video, you know, because you've got to just keep some of this stuff secret, you know. Now she doesn't really care, but she will demand two new pairs of shoes. She controls the checkbook anyway, it doesn't matter. Okay, this is Tubal Kane saying so long for now.